This is the video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Thursday, August 19th, 2021. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. We're doing a more extended update this week. Um, I'm going to spend some time walking through what our stepwise re-entry plan is for the coming a uh, couple months as we go into our congregational year in the fall. You might notice um, that the background behind me is back to uh, the home office um, where I spent much of last year. That's for a lot of reasons, um, not least of which is that we are now in the orange on the COVID risk dial, which we'll talk about a little as we go forward. So that's our transition point for staff to work primarily from home, although I'll still be at the office at 6300 um, here and there. But the plan for today is to walk through this, this plan that we've been putting together over the summer and putting it into place this fall. So I want to start out with where we are. This is the current situation in Lincoln. We'll bring this up full screen. So this is a chart um, published by Healthy Nebraska of the COVID-19 cases in Lancaster County. Um, over the last year and a half since the beginning of the pandemic. The blue bars are the daily reported case rates. The black line overlaid is the seven day rolling average of cases. This is um, current as of uh, this Monday of this week. And you can see as we go through, you can see the, the arc of cases that we've seen beginning in April of 2020, the initial surge that we saw then last summer's surge, then the fall into the big, big winter surge, and then this spring as we talked through reopening, and then finally this summer. Now, the thing that I want to observe about this more than anything else is that while we spent two months in this area where cases were very, very low, that is not where we currently are. Cases are increasing rapidly. Now, it's important to say that um, these, uh, the, the colors that are used in this particular graph are not exactly the same as the, as the colors on the COVID risk dial from the, uh, the county. Um, they're instead the Harvard Global Health Initiative um, standards, which are, which are similar but not identical. All right, so, that's the current situation that we find ourselves in. As we've been putting together our, um, our re-entry plan, we have a couple assumptions that we're grounding this in. And the first is that we're in a time of rapid transition with the pandemic. This is a period of uncertainty with the Delta variant rapidly changing case counts um, and vaccination rates that are, are not static they're they're still going up and in fact they might be going up a little bit faster now than they have recently one of the images that's floating around in my professional circles is that this is really the start of a second marathon that we didn't necessarily know that we were going to run we kind of got to the end of of last year got into the summer thought we were okay um, and then this variant has really put us on uh, at the starting line of a new um, a new period, a new race to run. Our other assumption, and actually this isn't an assumption anymore, um, is that while masks and vaccinations significantly decrease risk, evidence suggests that breakthrough cases um, and transmission from vaccinated to unvaccinated folks is possible. We actually have seen this in our congregation. Um, we've had at least one case of a, a breakthrough um, COVID-19 case of somebody who was fully vaccinated and regularly wearing a mask um, and became positive and symptomatic with COVID-19. So we know that this is happening and we know that it's happening in our congregation. We also know um, that as of yet, no children under the age of 12 are vaccinated. We're likely several months away from that happening at least. And that has some implications about how we care for children and families with young children right now. And we also know that within our congregation, there are varying levels of risk tolerance and risk aversion um, among our members. We have 
um, some folks who are um, who are ready to be back fully and some folks who are very, very hesitant to be in our building. And we also know that that's based both on the specific circumstances of each member's life. Some folks have young children, some folks have underlying um, immune conditions, some folks have any number of other things that either raise or lower their personal risk tolerance. And part of it's personal choice, right? Some of us, we each make a calculus about how much risk we are willing to take on at any given time. And then the last assumption that Stacy pointed out, and I think it's a really important one to say, is that we've done this before, right? This is not, uh, to go back to that first metaphor, this is not our first marathon, actually. We've, we have, we know what it means to move to online worship. We know what it means to do Sunday school via Zoom. We know what evening vespers look like online. We know how we can sustain small groups when we're not meeting in person. And we know how to re-enter our building when it is safe to do so. We've done all of those things before. So the big difference now from even a year ago um, is that unlike a year ago when we were saying we're, we're making all of this up as we go along, that's actually not where we are now. Now we're saying we have this plan and we're going to continue to work the plan that we have. Now a lot of our plan is based on the COVID-19 risk dial that the um, county health department puts out. and. Um, before going into the specifics of how we'll respond to that health dial, I do want to take a few minutes and review what that risk dial is based on, um, because this is what informs our decision making at the church um, quite a bit. So um, this is, broadly speaking, the, the COVID-19 risk dial. It's published every Tuesday by the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. It runs on a green, yellow, orange, and red scale. And within each of those, there are subdivisions. So low yellow, mid yellow, elevated yellow, low orange, mid orange, elevated orange. And each of these colors, the health department um, labels with a different level of risk. So they say that green is a low risk of COVID-19 spread and impact on the community. Yellow is their shorthand for moderate risk. Orange is high risk. Red is severe. Now, um, one thing that comes around fairly often is this question about how that risk dial is settled on. Um, and so I just want to go through the metrics that they use. And, and if you're interested in reading more about this, that link that's up there, um, and let me pull this up full screen. Um, the link that's at the bottom of the screen uh, lays out this uh, this information in great detail um, in, in PDF form. So um, the risk dial is based on seven different metrics. They're the test positivity rate, so that's the average weekly percent positivity of COVID-19 tests. If we do 100 tests and 10 of them come back positive, then we have a 10% positivity rate. The case rate, and that's the number of new cases per 100,000 people. That gets a little complicated because there are about 320,000 people in Lincoln, so um, the, the case rate is not exactly the same as the number of cases reported in any given day. The testing turnaround time, this one's pretty straightforward. It's the average number of days between when a test is given and when the results get to the county. Contact tracing, this is the percent of cases and contacts contacted within 48 hours. The healthcare system impact and capacity, that's based both on the um, percent of ICU beds available and the percent of general population medical surgical beds being used to care for COVID-19 patients. The vaccination rate, which is simply the percentage of the eligible population that's been vaccinated and the death rate. And for that, the county uses a three-week rolling average of deaths per week. Now, for each of these metrics, the county publishes also a green, yellow, orange, red spectrum. So this is the example for, for deaths per week. And they report that as part of the, the broader reporting on the risk dial. So you can say, and you can see, that, say, four of these seven 
um, are in the orange category and one is in the red and one's in the yellow and one's in green. That's where the, the art of the wrist dial as a whole comes in is, is uh, interpreting how to, to combine these seven metrics into a single um, output. But so far the county's been pretty transparent in how they do that, which makes us pretty comfortable in, in following their lead. So, uh, right, the other way to think about this, sorry, shouldn't have made that. The other way to think about this um, is when we were in each of these categories. This is that same um, chart from the beginning. Um, you can see the, the arc of the last year and a half. And so it's helpful for me um, when I think about what orange means to really think back when the last time we were in orange for a sustained period of time was. So just going down the list, the last time we were in green is really the summer of 2021. That's June and July of this year. So you <laughs> remember that pretty well. Um, the longest sustained time we were in yellow was this spring. This is when we were slowly stepping down um, and, and re-entering our building over April and May and then early June. Orange, um, really the last time we were in a, a long sustained period of orange was actually about this time last year, um, was in the early fall of 2020. This was as students were coming back to UNL um, and, uh, and we were starting to see increased cases in the county. And then the last time we were in red, of course, was the was the severe outbreak that happened over the winter in mostly mid November uh, to mid January. All right. So what does that mean for us? The second half of this presentation is going to focus on our proposed plan for the fall, how we are going to interpret each of those levels for our operations at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. So we'll start with an overview and then walk through um, what each of these mean. Um, starting on September 5th with our in-gathering, we'll have a single service at 10 a.m. Um, if the risk dial is in green or yellow, that service will be both in person and live streamed. If the risk dial is in orange or red, we'll both live, We'll live stream that or we'll pre-record it. Similarly, we'll hold a monthly Vespers service on the third Thursday of the month. If the dial is in green or yellow, that will be in person. If it's in orange or red, that will be remote. The office will be open um, at green and yellow. Again, becomes primarily remote at orange and red. Um, and then Sunday school is the, is the one um, place that doesn't quite follow this pattern. Um, the Sunday school will go online at mid yellow. Uh, that's because of the lack of pediatric vaccines that we talked about. Everything else, um, rentals, rites of passage, other groups are going to follow that same, uh, that same kind of pattern. So to go through each of these in a little bit more detail, green is really our status quo condition. This is what the church looks like when we are fully open. We'll have one service for now at 10 o'clock. That'll be at full capacity and live streamed. One thing that we are going to do because we're at full capacity and because having children in our service is really, really important is that we are going to ask that until pediatric vaccines are available, that everybody wear a mask at that 10 o'clock service. We're not going to have a, a mask requirement generally through the week, but we are going to ask on Sunday morning when we have large groups of adults and large groups of kids both present in the same space that we wear masks to, uh, to, do, to ensure the safety of our children. Um, small groups can meet normally um, at, at Green. Um, religious Growth and Learning Sunday School will be age-based programming following a time for all ages. This is what, uh, what the church often looks like uh, when there's not a pandemic. Um, and then we'll follow the, our regular posted office hours. Now yellow is really our transitional um, 
stage. If we think about green as our status quo where we're open and uh, orange is the time where we move primarily online, yellow is a series of increasing mitigation measures between those two things. So for worship, you can see we, we start at low yellow, starting to drop the capacity on Sunday morning in worship to allow more space um, between folks on Sunday morning and also fewer people breathing in that, in that space. Um, yellow is also when we'll start requiring masks in the building without exception, whether it's Sunday morning, Tuesday afternoon, um, or uh, um, in the office. The, the exception is um, while we're at yellow, if you are outdoors on our property, um, we'll, we'll still ask you to mask, but we won't ask you to, uh, to distance uh, from each other in the same way. Um, as I said before, for religious growth and learning, um, that'll be multi-platform at low yellow, um, but then at mid and high, that will be fully online. I did forget to say at green, our intention is also to continue doing online religious growth and learning, at least until vaccines are available for our families for whom that's, that's an important option. Um, the office, as long as we're at low yellow, will continue to be open with masks. Once we get into mid and high yellow, we'll still be open as an office, um, but we'll move to by appointment instead of, instead of open for walk-ins. The big transition happens at orange. When we hit orange on the wrist dial, and, and I should say as I'm recording this that this is the stage that we hit this week, so, so this is the stage that we're in right now. The biggest change is that we'll move worship primarily online. Now, because we have this live streaming capacity that we've spent the summer installing, worship will actually look pretty similar between yellow and orange. We'll, we'll have it live from the sanctuary, um, live streamed to our YouTube channel. So instead of uh, like in, in high yellow where we have 30 people in the room and 50 people on YouTube, we'll just be doing the same thing but with everybody um, attending on YouTube. At this point, we'll also ask small groups to meet online. Um, religious growth and learning will meet, move fully online. Um, and staff will work primarily from home. That's why I'm back in this room looking at this orange wall and a camera in front of me. And then the last step, um, is if we go into the red again. And at that point, we really will move all our operations out of the building and, and really um, distance as much as we can. The, the biggest change that that looks like day to day is that at that point, we would move back to pre-recorded worship services rather than having a group of people live streaming um, from the sanctuary. Um, other than that, everything, everything else stays the same. That's a lot. It's a lot to handle. Um, it's a lot to be in right now. And it's a lot to be starting again. You know, the, the, uh, the second marathon image is a, is a good one for me because it is exhausting to imagine going through another congregational year like the last one. Um, I recognize that. We all recognize that for each other. Um, but we don't get to choose what the circumstances around us are. We just get to choose how we respond to them. So instead of ending on this note, instead of ending on, uh, oh, right. So before we go into that, the short, short version too, um, that we'll use uh, to, to explain a lot of this um, is that green is our status quo condition. That's our church is fully open. Yellow is our transitional um, stage from being fully open to primarily online. Orange, we're primarily online. Red, we are online and battening up the hatches. So if you, if you can remember just this slide, um, that is uh, the slide that everything else is commentary on. All right, I'm gonna end here because we don't get to choose the situation that we're in. Um, that, is, that is the truth of being a religious community and being humans in the world. Howard Zinn was a historian 
of the worst parts of American history. He had every reason um, to be cynical about the world, and in some ways he was profoundly. But in other ways, he wrote beautifully on possibility. And so this is a quote that's been going around recently. Um, and I just want to end this, this presentation with Howard Zinn's words. He wrote this in his autobiography, You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, and kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act and at least the possibility of sending the spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act, in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is itself a marvelous victory. So here's the last thing. Marathons are hard. They're really hard. But I have been told that the second one is easier because you know what to expect. And this time we know what to expect. We know how to do this. We have done it before and we're gonna do it again. And we know that the hardest parts of the transitions, when you're running a long distance, whether it's a marathon or a half marathon, it's the first two miles and the last two miles that are horrible. Once you get into it, once you get into the rhythm of running or managing online worship or any amount of pandemic mitigation that we're in, we find that we can do it. We've done it before and we'll do it again. We don't get to choose if we're going to run this marathon. We don't get to make that decision. That decision has been made by the number of people who have gotten vaccinated or not, and the number of people who have chosen to wear masks in public or not. But we do get to choose how we act now. We get to choose if we're vaccinated now, we get to choose if we wear masks now, and we get to choose whether or not we have hope and faith in the months to come. And we will continue to do that as we have throughout. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I will see you soon.